Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, famed for bringing Sherlock Holmes to life, was captivated by the supernatural. His creation, The Hound of the Baskervilles, was inspired by the legends of ghostly black dogs known across England for their ominous presence. But what are these creatures and what inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to pen such a masterpiece that would chill the bones of its readers for generations? Hello everyone, today we delve into a tale that intertwines literature and folklore where the spectral and the real dance on a theme veil of our reality. We're exploring the legends of a black dog, a cryptid that has haunted the British Isles for centuries and its connections to one of the most brilliant literary minds of all time, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Legends speak of the black dogs as harbingers of death, protectors of ancient pathways and guardians of the underworld. These spectral canines have been both feared and revered. The black dog cryptids are not just tales of fear and warning. They're deeply woven into the fabric of English folklore associated with crossroads. The legends vary by region, but they share common traits, immense size, dark fur and an eerie presence. It all begins here in Bas Fastly. Up the hill there is a ruin of a church called Holy Trinity Church and this is where it all started. On Dartmoor in Southern Devon, the squire Richard Cable, to posterity known as Dirty Dick, lived for hunting and he was known at the time as a morally evil man. He was accused of, among other things, immorality, I guess that's why the name, he allegedly murdered his wife and according to some, he sold his soul to the devil. When he died in July 1677, black dogs have said to have appeared around this burial chamber. So a phantom pack of hounds come baying across the moor to howl at his tomb. From that night on, he said to lead the phantom pack across the moor, usually on the anniversary of his death. If the pack were not out hunting, they could be found ranging around his grave, howling and shrieking. The villagers put a round building around it and to be sure they put a huge slab at the top and it's right here. Does it? Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories. Oh wow! People come here and draw pentagrams on the ground and stuff. And I've had one time someone come here with a Ouija board and they got like some something come. Oh, that's great. <laughs> they were one up to as well. Oh, were they? Yeah. Yeah. I oh. A story from a friend, friend's brother who said he wasn't here, but they'd come up here and were and put together a Ouija board. Oh, Jesus. They ran out of here with scratches on their backs and stuff. Yeah. This tale seems to have inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to write The Hand of the Basket Bales. As you can see from the front page of this book, he actually thanks 
Robinson for mentioning the story to him. Incidentally, Devon's folklore includes tales of a fearsome supernatural dog known as the Yeth Hound. as hell. As so you all know, the Hundred Baskervilles was set in the Dagmar Moors. There are many myths about the Yeth Hounds. They're said to be servants of the devil or the denizens of the wild hunt. Pursuing pool travellers unlucky to be caught while out at night on the moors. The Yeth hounds are blacker than black. Their cry is the cry of the Banshee. To hear it, it means death within a week. Worst of all, they can be seen hurtling across the moors at times. Chasing something invisible through the night. It is said they do not just hunt spirits, but the spirits themselves. My have Sir Conan Doyle heard the story. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was fascinated with the supernatural. His genius was in taking this folklore and weaving it into a narrative that reflected the anxieties of his time. In the Victorian era, there was a thriving occult revival in England. The Hound of the Baskervilles isn't just a story about a ghostly dog. It's about the clash between the rational and the supernatural. From his fervent belief in psychic powers to publishing papers on the existence of fairies, which existence he took very seriously, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was about as far from the ever-rational Sherlock Holmes as possible. Tonight, as we walk the moors, we can't help but feel the weight of centuries of stories unexplained phenomena that lurk in the shadow. Well you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give us a thumb up and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye!